Welcome to Salon Talks. I'm Mary Elizabeth Williams, and this is my Kaimal. She is an entrepreneur. You've seen her food in your supermarket shelves. She's also a cookbook author, and her new book, which is absolutely beautiful, is called Indian Flavor Every Day. Hi, Maya. How Hi. are you? Okay, I love this book. It is so beautiful, and I love your mission. Like when I go on your website and I see your bio, and it says you are dedicated to bringing Indian flavors to Americans yeah. while staying true to your roots. We need yeah. this so badly. Mm. <laughs> we need you. Tell me how you got started on this mission. It's, it's, the book is kind of a continuation of what I try to do with my company, right? So it's about, about bringing, making it accessible, easy. Indian doesn't have to be a heavy lift. Um, it can be, <laughs> and, then, and it can be wonderful when you like spend all the time and do all the toasting and the grinding and everything from scratch. It's incredible, but, but I'm just convinced there's a way to experience and enjoy that cuisine without, you know, and through the easy door, right? I know there's, an, there's easy doors, so the sauces, the products we do, that's one way to do it. But I just found that in my own cooking, I wanted Indian flavor, I wanted Indian an Indian inflection in my meals, but I didn't want to go through all the work and I didn't necessarily want to have sauce, my own sauce every night. So I was, I sort of looked at the cuisine as um, built on different flavor, uh, flavor building components, right? And so I tried to break those down. What are the techniques that go into getting all that yummy, nuanced, layered flavor? and so I, I, may, I designed the book around like teaching those techniques and showing you how to use them. And you can just, you know, you can use one, you can use two, you can, you can just do simple vegetables, you can do a dessert, you can do a salad. You know, you can, you can Indian flavor can sort of find its way into your meal in these more simple ways. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that is so different about like when I was growing up where it was just like, there was like maybe one small section of ethnic food mm -hmm. and like and but if you would go out for like maybe you would go out for it but bringing food into your own home we all have like blended communities now blended right. families now there's a different kind of i think reluctance which is that fear of the american who's going to screw it up yeah. and tick off the family or do it wrong and embarrass yeah. themselves, right? Right. There's the fear of like, I'm going yeah. to offend my loved ones because right. I'm gonna screw <laughs> this up because there's a special super authentic way to right. do it. Right, yes. How do we get past those mental blocks? Yeah, well, I think the thing is to understand that it's not of technique-driven cuisine, right? They're not hard steps. There are some steps and there are some ingredients that you need to have. But what I've tried to do with this book is make the steps, that, well, also break down the ingredient deck. I think that's really intimidating to people when they open an Indian cookbook and they just see this like kind of massive list of things. So I, I don't even like seeing those lists. Like I'm just like, oh God, what can I do that has three ingredients in it, right? But the thing is I've, I've sort of like broken out the list so that you kind of understand how, where you're going, right? So you're gonna start with like the tarka step, say, like where you're seasoning your oil and you see that and then there's a step that corresponds. And then there's your masala. You're gonna mix these ground spices together and then that's gonna, you're gonna add that over here. And so visually, I've tried to lay it out so it's very clear for people. And then in terms of ingredients, I've tried to build it around things that you can get at a grocery store or things that you're finding at a farmer's market or, you know, I'm trying to try to meet people where they are, right? You know, how do they live? They don't have a ton of time. So I'm going to make it very clear. I'm going to try to reduce the number of steps. And, and the other thing that I think is really important and will really help people is um, I encourage them to, to do their mise en place, right? So set out, measure everything and set it out and then go because otherwise you're going you're gonna to get caught up in the fact that there's still things to prep and, and you need to add them to the pan because there's a sequence to it and some of it goes really quickly. So that I think will help people too. And then how do we convince our friends that like, I'm doing my best here? <laughs> well, I mean, I think people generally really appreciate the effort, you know, and, and Indian is, a, is um, everyone knows, it's, 
pretty involved to make. So hopefully your, your friends will see <laughs> the energy that's gone into it. But you know, one of the things that I also want to encourage people is that you don't have to, it's not like, like all or nothing. You don't have to make all Indian things to put on the table together. You can make one thing, right? You could make a chicken curry and then you could have it with some couscous and a salad or green beans or, you know, that it's, or you could make your vegetable be the Indian thing with your roast chicken or, you know, or your, your fried tofu. Or, so I, I, I try to explain um, and show in the recipes some suggestions of have this with, and they're non-Indian suggestions, right? So it's just sort of opening things up to, to show you like how you can fit these these dishes into your normal life. Yeah, and it, I, I mean, I think that's why the book is called Indian Flavor right. Every Day. Because yeah. it's about, it's, it's obviously about these beautiful, incredible recipes, but it's also about these flavors. Right. That then you can you think can of. And master, yeah, if you can just get your, your, your arms around those, then you can find ways to apply them. Right, in the same way that you have these other spices and condiments in your household, and it's like, that's the thing that I use. It's like, I can use yeah. these as well. Yeah, and just exactly. pull them out of my, my tool kit. You know, I like that you talk in the book about twists, mm -hmm. doing these certain mm -hmm. recipes with twists. And, you know, again, the conversation around food can be so emotional and so loaded and volatile for people. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you how you find that that line between mm -hmm. creating something new, mm -hmm. right? Doing something that is a twist, how we all find our way in and make it something original, but then also, as you say, staying true to your roots, mm -hmm. staying authentic. Yeah. That's a hard, hard walk. Yeah, I mean, this is how I feel about that. I, I think that we, you know, human beings have been assimilating ingredients forever, right? We do that. We're, we're, we're blending ideas all the time in everything we do, in food, in art, in, in language, all of it. And so when, with, you know, I, I, I resist this idea that we need to police food and that there are these, like, you know, rules and laws around what you can and cannot do. I think that if you try to sort of like force things together and, and you don't have a, a high level of comfort with, with the different techniques or traditions, then your, your food will not be good, right? It will fail. But I think when you, when you know what you're doing, when you, when you understand the cuisines that you're trying to blend together and you can kind of respect each of them, then you will you will end up with something that tastes really good and deliciousness wins in the end. So I do think there's a way to do it where, but you need to do it from a place of, of, of some, some um, expertise or just some fluency in the cuisine. So like, for example, you know, my mother used to make this, she, she loved to cook from Julie Child's cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. She, I sort of grew up with her making a lot of food out of that. So we had the, uh, potato leek soup as a kind of, you know, one of her favorites. And my father, being from South India, would encourage my mom to add some cayenne to it, right? So it started to get a, like, a, have a little edge to it. So I took that idea and I added a little turmeric to it too, so it's kind of this golden color. And then I took some of the leeks, um, bef pulled them out before cooking them in the soup, and then I fried them in ghee, and then put that on top as a sort of a, a topping. So it's got, so that's sort of like, you know, an Indian Tarka technique, like that frying in the hot oil thing. So it's really good, right? It sounds, <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, it sounds amazing. <laughs> and, and I think it, 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 it manages to straddle the two cultures in, in, a, in a way that, yeah, that works out. Yeah, that feels like love. Yeah. All right, I, let's get. I want to know how. Let's get started. You you open the book with a pantry with the pantry staples, and mm -hmm. for people who are you know we we want to experiment with some new cuisines, we want to try some new flavors. We don't want to go out and buy an entire as you see a yeah. long laundry yeah. list. And a lot of the things on your list are are things we may even already have in our home. Give Probably. me some of the, like the rundown of my starter Indian pantry. Yeah. It's, like you said, it's things you probably already have. You need, you know, your ground spices, you have to have the basics, the cumin, coriander, turmeric, cayenne, black pepper, cinnamon, clove, cardamom. Um, you can do pretty much everything in the book with those. 
um, then there are some nice to haves, right? I mean, fenugreek and asafoetida, okay, those are more esoteric, and you obviously need to go to a special shop to get those um, or order them online. But, there, but there's like, you know, two recipes that call for those. Um, fresh curry leaves, right? They're amazing. Um, if they just add this herbal, incredible aroma to the food when you drop them in hot oil, but they're, they're a little tricky to find. So I made sure that every recipe tasted fine without them. There's still enough flavor and enough going on that you don't have to have those. But you know, you need ginger, you need garlic, you need to find some kind of fresh chili. Hopefully you can find serranos, maybe you can find Thai. If nothing else, hopefully jalapeno or in your, you know, so I explain the different heat levels of those and then how to use, you know, relative proportions. I love in the book, you explain how to test the heat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this, this is going to change my life. <laughs> tell me. It tell, doesn't have to be a mystery, right? Yes, it's right. Like you tell, look at this chili and you're like, are you hot? <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell me the technique. Yeah. Okay, so this is what my grandmother did and my dad did. And so, um, so all the heat is really in that white sort of pithy stuff that, I mean, the seeds obviously have some heat, but they are not the main source. It's coming from the part they're attached to. And that's mostly concentrated up at the top, at the stem end. So you, if you slice off this, the stem end, just below like the, the calyx, the little cap, um, and you, you expose that white part and the seeds. And then you just take, take your finger. I like to use my ring finger because I'm not going to like stick it in my eye accidentally. So you just you just touch the tip of the chili, you touch the tip of your tongue, and you'll know like instantly if it's hot or not. And you won't burn your mouth because you've barely you've you've barely really gotten any on your tongue. But you've gotten enough of a sense. So if you don't really taste anything, you do it again and then you realize, okay, it's mild. If you get it like instantaneously, then you know you got a really really live one. You're gonna, you've saved me so many <laughs> tears, so many future tears. From yeah. I, can, I can tell already. I love that. And then obviously the important thing is don't drink water. If it's too hot, oh, don't yeah, drink water. Yeah, no, have some bread or even yogurt. We'll have something with some, with some fat or some starch, but not water because it's an oil. It's not water soluble. It's not, <laughs> not going to make it good. Yeah. Um, I love to ask people what their ride or die tools are. Oh. I like so people like we all feel really strongly mm -hmm. about like our, our fish spatula oh. or our mandolin. What's yours? So my my uh, juicer, my lemon juicer. I'm I'm just like cranking that thing all the time. <laughs> I'm using my microplane also, garlic and ginger just come out so beautifully. I used to like use that ceramic thing and it's so hard. That's stupid. So, <laughs> um, I mean, I use my, my measuring spoons are my best friends. I measure everything. I really, I'm not, you know, I think with Indian food, it's, there's just too much to, for me to like wing it. You know, I really want to, I like to, I like to really make sure that my proportions are my proportions and so I'm, I'm like a big measurer. And when you're particularly, measuring is particularly important when you're baking. Yeah. And I love the dessert chapter oh. in this book so much. I, I love any cookbook that has, has a, a serious dessert chapter and what you did in this chapter is so unique and so special because it is really that twist mm. and taking pastry which is so European and giving it this Indian flavor. Talk to me about how those recipes came about. Oh, sure, yeah, I'd love to. It's true that that chapter does represent like the twist. A couple of chapters do, I'd say, like the the soups maybe, and um, yeah, I, I, but the dessert and the salads and the desserts. So, um, well, I I worked with a friend of mine named um, Susan Herman Loomis, who is a c prolific I love her author. books. She's wonderful, right? She lives in Paris. She's American, but she's, yeah, she's really an amazing baker. I have all of her baker. books. Do you? Yeah. Oh, she's, yeah. Well, we, um, we met, and so she helped me on this book because I was, I was so kind of like, 
trying to do two things, right? Do my, my day job, write a book. I'm like, okay, I'm going to need a little backup here. <laughs> so she was amazing, just amazing, and would test every, you know, every recipe out. And when it came to the desserts, we really, that was quite a collaboration because she had, she had some great ideas. Or I would have an idea and she would have the technique. And so together we could kind of hammer it out long distance. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to find ways to make Western desserts, but with Indian flavors in them, because that's how, that's how I like to eat my desserts. Like I, that chocolate cashew tart, I can't wait to get. That is really, that is one of the best. My daughter, Lucy, makes that as her like trademark thing to bring to a party. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's quite delicious, and it's got garam masala, right? And it's got a particular kind of garam masala. So people are now becoming pretty familiar with that blend. It's, a, you know, cinnamon, clove, cardamom, um, black pepper. But there's one from the southern part of India where my dad's from that I'm calling in this book Kerala, Garam Masala, Kerala being that region um, in the southern, on the southern tip. And it has some star anise and some fennel in it. So those notes just lend themselves to desserts really beautifully. So I, I use that in a number of the recipes, including that chocolate tart. Is there, I mean, we love all our children, but do you have a <laughs> recipe in the book that's a, like a special favorite or one that you really feel proud of? Oh, that I feel proud of. Um, well, gosh, that's so, yeah, I mean, I do, uh, I love the chicken chetnad. It's this chicken recipe in there that is full of toasted coconut and black pepper. And to me, it just transports me straight to South India, which is one of my favorite places in the world. Um, so that one, I just, yeah, that's my like, mm, that's dear to my heart. <laughs> it's gonna be dear to mine soon as well. I have to ask you one more thing because in addition to being a cookbook author, you are an entrepreneur. You have been bringing Indian flavor into our homes for almost 20, 20 years now? Yes, 20 years in business. I wanna ask you just a little bit about that because everybody's got a dream, everybody's got a thing they wanna to bring to the, to the world, to share with the world. Especially as a woman, it's very challenging. What, what was the hardest lesson you've had to learn in doing that, in being a startup uh, business person? Yeah, well, I think it was to, to go slow, actually, to, you know, you, you, you start down this path, you've got so many ideas and you just kind of want to keep churning them out and the industry is asking you, what's new, what's new? And you get a lot of pressure to keep innovating. And, and I think one of the classic mistakes is over-innovating, going too quickly, not being able to um, support the things that, that you've already done. And so taking our time, especially in the beginning, and just sort of putting out three sauces, and then that was it. For like the first three years, we had three sauces. And it allowed us to build the infrastructure and kind of, you know, the team and understand what we were even doing. I had no background in business at all. I was an art major. You know, it was all really new to me. So I needed to just figure myself out. So um, so that, I think, was was you know, and then and and not all our innovation has worked. You try things, you love them, but they don't resonate necessarily. So, so that's always a lesson. Is like, you know, did it, is it working? Is it working? Are we selling? Are people buying it? You know, you you just never really, you know, know. Okay. So. Well, a lot of it has worked really well, obviously. <laughs> oh, and thanks. now you've got this beautiful book. I'm so excited for you, and I'm so excited for it to be out in the world because it is absolutely lovely, and it really is that book that's going to encourage all of us to have a little oh. bit of Indian flavor every day. <laughs> Mike, well, thank you so much for thank talking. Thank you. It's a pleasure.